A young girl is showing off her bunny outfit to her friend so she can capture these shots. Suddenly, their colleague walks in on them, disappointed that he has to witness this day in and day out. The show starts off with a young man lamenting his final moments as his whole group is about to be defeated by an unknown enemy. However, a girl manifests right beside himself suddenly congratulating him. Presently, Kusanami Takaru, a young student of the Anti-Magic Academy, is often looked down upon by other students as he is unable to wield weapons and uses his sword as an alternative. Takaru has sworn to become an Inquisitor someone who eliminates and imprisoned witches due to the debt he is burdened with thanks to his father. As he enters the platoon office, his colleague Ikaruga Sujinami is sexually harassing Seanji Uzagi by making her wear a bunny suit. Suddenly, tears burst out from his eye, and the latter immediately pushes him down as she believes she should be the one crying here due to bullying. Sujinami takes some pictures of them and decides to harass them further. Meanwhile, his supervisor demotes a young inquisitor from her position due to her inability to capture a witch. She tries explaining that it wasn't possible without killing it, but the superior tells her that they must never take a life as such is not their moral code. She is assigned to Takaru's group, the worst team in the whole academy. At the 35th platoon office, it is revealed that Takaru is their squad captain, and to make their reputation better, they decide to pick up a mission. However, due to their low numbers and with just one sniper, Yuzagi, they don't feel like they can succeed. Tsujinami reveals that an illegal trade is going to happen by midnight, and the three agree to take this mission. Suddenly, the chairman walks in, informing them that he has brought them help so they can get better scores next time. He introduces his foster daughter, Aoka, to them, and they are all amazed that a prodigy inquisitor is joining them. Tsujinami is assured that something is fishy and wants to know her reason for joining them, but the two don't reveal anything. Takaru recognizes her from his earlier academy days, but he is only met with embarrassment as the other doesn't know him at all. Later that night, they head out to stop the smugglers from doing their illegal activities. Yuzagi is too nervous since they have a mission after a long while, but talking to Takaru eases her a little. While Tsujinami operates from the shadows, Aka and Takaru confront the enemy, and after Yuzagi shoots the enemies, the latter enters the room. Unfortunately for him, Yuzagi has fired at the wrong building and now he has to face the consequences as all the enemies turn up on him. They are bewildered to find that an Inquisitor is using a sword in this day and age and mock him. This doesn't go well with Takaru, who soon demonstrates his strength by slowing down the time with his magic and slashing their bullets into two. Just as he is about to go berserk, Ikaruga thinks of a solution to calm him down and uses his little sister's voice. After being back to his senses, Takaru assures Tsujinami that he was just kidding and wasn't planning on eliminating the enemies. Suddenly, lights go off and Akko, with her incredible martial arts skills, knocks all of them out. The main culprit uses magic to summon a mech suit, but Aoka is used to fighting like this, and after exchanging blows with him, she effortlessly manages to bring him down. Takaru is impressed with her abilities, and just as he is about to approach her, his feet slip and drop on top of her. The other is enraged that he is fumbling her breasts and commands that he get off, which he immediately accepts. Yuzagi fires up another shot, but it winds up doing friendly damage and Takaru is knocked out. Aoka is already regretting joining their squad. Aoka has been going on missions by herself and Yuzagi demands an explanation. The other criticizes her sniping abilities as she gets too under pressure and often misses her target. Tsujinami also has her faults according to Aoka, and she also instructs Takaru to become a better captain. After he goes away, they decide to amend things and throw up a party for her since she is their comrade now. However, when she enters the room and finds them celebrating her return, she advises that they focus on their missions. As she is about to exit the room, Takaru spots an injury on her arm, but the other doesn't reveal anything. He goes after her, and after much insistence, she admits to going on her own after certain enemies. Later that night, the two go out to target Valhalla, an evil witch organization, and after knocking out the main guards, Appa heads inside. She is heartbroken to find a small girl being used as a sacrifice for their gains and swears revenge. Takaru realizes that she isn't being herself and stops her from killing the others. She reveals her spite for witches by telling him that her entire family was wiped out by them. No matter what they have done, Takaru feels that they shouldn't become the exact copies of their enemies and stops her, assuring her that even though they might have differences for now, the two will become good comrades. Meanwhile, a suspicious violet-eyed girl watches Takaru from afar. Back when Takaru had just entered the academy, their instructor commanded them to engage with a fellow student in battle, and Takaru felt like he could overtake anyone as long as he had his sword by his side. However, he was reminded of the power of guns and lost to Aoka. Presently, the chairman tells Aoka to continue doing missions with the platoon squad, and she persistently denies it. 
Once the other tells him that there is a Relic Eater candidate in the squad someone who can form a contract with a legendary weapon, she is instantly drawn into the conversation. As much as she would like this to be false, she has no choice but to accept that Inquisitors are chosen by Relics themselves. After she leaves, the violet-haired girl appears revealed to be a weapon in, in human form. Elsewhere, a member of the Valhalla group meets up with a necromancer and alchemist, Haunted, who has just murdered 50 people. Seeing as she is mad, Haunted explains that he didn't kill any ordinary person and assures her that they were all criminals. At the office, Yuzagi assures Sujinami that she will do better next time, making excuses like usual. Suddenly, Alka enters the room and she criticizes Takaru's reason for becoming an instructor. Money. Hey, he gotta feed his family. She doesn't think of him as someone who is fit for the role of an inquisitor, let alone a squad captain. Sujinami doesn't take these insults lightly and tells her not to meddle in other stuff. Moreover, she reveals that Alka is infamous for killing witches and other people when she goes berserk. Meanwhile, Haunted summons a magical beast to terrorize the city. Takaru quickly heads off after Alka and finds her at the graveyard before her parents and little sister's grave. She reveals that they were killed right before her eyes, and that is why she cannot contain her calmness when the witches are around. She believes the nickname Calamity perfectly fits her as she has given up on her humanity to pursue her revenge. As the two are talking, a massive explosion occurs and they head to the city to wipe out the summoned ghouls. Takaru's glance meets Lapis, the girl from before, but she instantly vanishes. Sujinami informs him that an Einar jar has been summoned, originally the resurrected soul of the famous King Arthur, along with a weapon, railgun, infused with the magical energy of Excalibur. Takaru wants to take him out to prove his strength. Meanwhile, the Einar jar is heading toward the academy to free the witches when Alka confronts it, but the other overwhelms her quickly, forcing her to summon her weapon Vlad, with whom she has a temporary contract. With her weapon, she is holding fairly well against her enemy, but after she lends in her energy to use an attack, the weapon disappears, revealing that his master told him to return. She is at the mercy of the Einar jar, but Takaru arrives just in time to save her. He holds his own against a greater enemy with just a tiny sword, but eventually gets defeated. As he is lamenting his defeat, Lapis manifests right next to him, and takes his consciousness to another realm, asking various questions to fulfill the contract. After he agrees to everything, he gets a cool hero suit, and all his wounds are healed. With the Witch Hunter armor, he doesn't even need to evade any attacks as he can just absorb them. After unleashing his full power, he easily gains a victory against the Einar Jar. Later, he informs Alka that he has a little idea of what she's going through and wants her to rely on him, before passing out of stress in her lap. The chairman is guided to a room where they have captured the Aurora Witch Mikado Mary suffering from magical amnesia after they captured her. They decide to do an experiment and let her enroll at the academy. Later, the chairman informs Takaru that Lapis is a sword-type weapon, and he is the only one who has the ability to wield her, the reason why she chose him. Since she likes taking on a human form, the chairman has prepared a fake ID under the guise of Takaru's little sister and has enrolled her in a platoon squad, much to their surprise. The group is then informed about a new policy allowing the witches to attend the anti-magic academy. Alka argues, but the other tells her that they are doing an experiment. As they keep tailing her, Mary tells them to stop following her as the glapier in her neck will explore anyway in case she tries using magic. Surprisingly, Alka states that they will keep her safe, since it's their mission, a statement opposite to her personality. The two find rivals in each other and compete on various occasions during academy activities. After their classes are over, they start fighting and Takaru decides to stop them, only for him to be knocked out by them. Later, Mary feels bad for her actions and offers him a drink. She wonders whether he hates the witches too, but the other assures her that there is another reason for his passion for being an inquisitor. Mary has a goal of spreading the word that magic isn't evil in itself. Rather, the people who use it for misdeeds are, meanwhile, Haunted recalls how he framed Mary for the killing of Academy students and made her forget her memories of that moment. Haunted enjoys torturing people and cannot wait to get his hands on Mary. Later at their office, Mary and Alka start fighting again and Takaru is sandwiched. Yuzagi tells them that they should stop fighting over their first names and focus on the upcoming tournament. Takaru heads outside to analyze all of the matches and the opposition captain, Kuya, mocks his team for being losers. After their classes are over and he is leaving for his place, Mary accompanies him, revealing that she is ordered to stay at his place since it would be dangerous for her to live alone. Alka suspects that she is doing this just so she can seduce them and decides to accompany them as well. She feels an ominous aura from his apartment, but the other tells him that it might be a ghost or something, much to her disdain. Meanwhile, Inquisitors are keeping an eye on her and checking whether she will be rescued or attacked by Valhalla. At the tournament, Mary refuses to lend them a hand, and Takaru's swords are once again mocked, enraging him. Sujinami tells him to unleash his strength and offers him a massage for all night. 
After he heads out to counter the opposition, Mary also gives them a hand in distracting the other, and Yuzagi ultimately goes for the winning shot. While they celebrate their victory, Appa heads to the chairman's office to deliver a report. And instead, she is horrified to find the documents covering the details of Mary's crimes. Yuzagi and Sujinami are arguing once again, and Takaru tells Maria that he hopes she gets that close to Aoka as soon as possible. The other doesn't believe they will make a decent duo as their personalities are too distant. Although she doesn't remember any of her past, there is one moment etched into her memories, making her wonder whether she was a horrible person. Afterward, before the tournament resumes, Aoka rushes there to inform Takaru about the true nature of Mary in papers. Since they don't have any concrete evidence, they will just have to wait for the truth to resurface. During the battle, one of the opposition starts acting weird, and suddenly Haunted appears, killing the two students. As he reveals his intentions of rescuing Mary, the soldiers start attacking him, forcing him to create a magic field to interfere with the Dragoon's technology and kill the soldiers. Takaru and Mary are trapped inside the barrier, and Haunted tells them that she only belongs on his side. Takaru immediately realizes that he has an obsession with her, and clads himself with the Witch Hunter armor. The enemy is unexpectedly strong, and he is pierced right away, though Lapis heals him instantly. Yuzagi is injured, and Aoka and Suzunami rush to save her. After waking her up, Aoka contacts the chairman, revealing that his arrest of Mary was unlawful as her magic and the traces left at the crime scene didn't match at all. Instead of taking action against him, she asks him for a favor. On the other hand, Haunted also transforms and Takaru is disappointed that he was beaten in swordplay. Haunted tells Mary that she is a witch and should go somewhere she belongs. She doesn't believe anything he is saying, prompting him to release the magic that contains her memories. She recalls living in an orphanage where the sister taught her how she could protect people with magic. However, the orphanage was soon destroyed by the witch hunters and Haunted manipulated her into siding with Valhalla. He had promised to let her meet the other orphans, only for the painful revelation to agonize her as she lays her eyes on the dead skeletons of the children. Since there is nothing worth living for, she decides to use magic and lets the glapier explode. Fortunately, Aoka had asked the chairman to deactivate the necklace. Since she is throwing her life away, Aoka tells her to use it for good and help Takaru. After she unleashes her magic, Haunted dodges it, allowing Takaru to absorb it and power himself up. With assistance from Yuzagi, they are able to attain victory. Before Haunted withdraws through a portal, he asks for Takaru's name and recognizes him from the clan of demon hunters. Mary immediately heads to check up on him, thankful that she joined his squad. At her home, Yuzagi shows her results to her mother, and the other tells her to get ready for marriage as her mother doesn't see she would succeed at the academy. The new executive committee chairman, Ria Ma, announces a witch hunting festival. The group isn't interested at all until the prize is revealed to be money. Takaru is the most passionate soldier now. Yuzagi is about to enter the office when she overhears them talking about her and missing her since she has gotten late, something unusual for her. She just wants to hear more compliments until Merit brings up the subject of Sujinami sexually harassing her, and she has to barge in to stop her. While they are discussing strategies, Ishida, another squad's captain, enters the room and asks for cooperation for the upcoming festival. It doesn't kill to have a decent backup and Takaru immediately decides to form an alliance. Yuzagi is disappointed since she wanted to enjoy this last festival with her friends, but now they will have other students to spend time with. She stumbles upon Ria Ma, who is revealed to be her fiancé. The other doesn't think of her more than a possession, and she suffers a panic attack. Takaru spots her and immediately comes to her rescue. Later, while they are at the infirmary, Mary and Suzunami leave due to some unfinished work, and he is left alone, holding Yuzabi's hand. Meanwhile, the student council president, Nagaru Hashijiro, asks for Aoka's assistance in dealing with the legendary witch Mephistopheles, infamous for eating people's minds. She believes that the witch is connected to Ryume as he transferred in right after the attack. At the infirmary, Yuzagi wakes up, embarrassed that she was holding Takaru's hand the whole time. On their way back from the academy, Yuzagi informs Takaru about Ryume and her marriage. Since he knows she has too much on her mind, he asks her to stay the night over at his place. Yuzabi concludes that if she committed the deed with Takaru, she wouldn't need to marry Riyamat and head outside to confront him nakedly. Suddenly, the others walk in, enraged that he is taking advantage of her, though they clear out the confusion. Takaru has invited them for a meeting to make their reputation and Yuzagi's grades better so she wouldn't need to drop out. The following day, Sujinami makes them practice for the cosplay party at the festival, cheering up everyone in the process. Aoka enters the academy and finds the students painting white symbols all over the school, Ryama confronts Takaru and reveals that Yuzagi murdered her brother. This still doesn't give him the right to think of her as his tool, and the other promises to save Yuzagi. Aoka is still confused about the weird symbol and asks her relic about it, to which she responds that Ryama is planning on controlling the students' minds. 
Ryama encounters Yuzagi again and tells her that he will be with her for all eternity while mocking her for killing her brother and ultimately causing her to have a panic attack. The student council president realizes that her subordinate's mind has been taken over by Mephisto and confronts the witch. Shizuka, after surviving the attack, intentionally directs Alka to Ryama's location. The two are revealed to be working together. Alka is no match for her and is knocked out immediately. Before she gets taken over by Mephisto, she deactivates Mary's Glapier so she can use magic again. The reason Ryama got so popular at the academy and attained high status was all because of Mephisto. Nagaru contacts Takaru and informs him about Mephisto. Takaru isn't happy that she used Alka to deal with the enemy, but such matters are to be discussed later and he heads out to save Yuzagi, who is at the church according to Lapis. Yuzagi has a dream about her brother's death and how Ryama started abusing her. Ryama forces himself on Yuzagi, but the other bites him in retaliation. As he is about to unleash his weapon on the defenseless Yuzagi, Takaru barges in to protect her. He sends her away and engages the enemy in combat. After she reunites with the group, Tsujinami gives Yuzagi a couple of special bullets to destroy Mephisto. Mary is busy dealing with her spells when Mephisto attacks her. Yuzagi interrupts her, but she casts the lust spell on her, attracting all the boys to her. After finishing off Ryama, Takaru protects Mary from the attack. However, the enemy is too strong for him to take out alone. After Yuzagi returns, she is confused about who Mephisto really is, but Takaru tells her to shoot either of them since it won't kill them anyway. This convinces her that their enemy is the other, and after fending it off from Alka's body, she shatters her spiritual form. They quickly gather to check up on Alka, who assures them she is alive and well. The chairman invites Tsujinami to his room to inquire about the Lost Matrix, a mythical dark elf cell that could be used for resurrecting the dark elves. Even though she gives enough clues that she knows about it, she denies ever knowing its existence. After she leaves, his assistant wants him to lock her up, but he isn't fond of violence against his students and assures the others that time will tell. Outside, Tsujinami contacts someone. Meanwhile, their platoon has shown no progress and is worried that they won't be able to become inquisitors anytime soon. Tsujinami arrives and wants to share something with the rest. Takaru and her recall how they met and formed their small group, consisting of just them back then. She informs them that she will be absent for a while, but doesn't reveal a reason. Meanwhile, Tsujinami's sister Asuka discusses with Haunted how she betrayed the alchemist and sided with Valhalla. Even after years of research, she failed to resurrect the Dark Elves. Suddenly, she receives a telepathic message, indicating that her sister has leaked information regarding the Lost Matrix. Takaru and the others get lost while following Tsujinami. Asuka has hired mercenaries to get rid of Tsujinami, but Takaru and the others come to her rescue. Tsujinami and he end up getting separated from each other, and the former takes him somewhere safe. An alchemist contacts the chairman to inform him about the rogue actions of Tsujinami's research facility. She offers him 150 dragoons so he can destroy the lab. After giving a command to gather every witch hunter, the chairman reveals that he is going for an all-out war. Meanwhile, the girls are taken as prisoners by Isuaka and she walks in to tell them that Tsujinami has no regard for people except using them as a tool. In a flashback, it is revealed that the two sisters were raised to be researchers, without moral values. After reading some books, she began to question her life and experimented with something by creating a wood elf baby, Canaria. Since she created the elf illegally, she knew she would be disposed of soon, so she decided to run away with the Lost Matrix and Canaria, but is heartbroken when she found out that the researchers have already gotten rid of Canaria. Enrolling at the Anti-Magic Academy meant suicide for someone intervening with the resurrection of Dark Elves, but she didn't care. After informing Takaru of this, he wants to know why she is so curious about the Dark Elf. Instead of answering, she gets on top, revealing that she wants to experience sex as she will be killed soon enough. Just as they are about to begin, the enemy forces arrive and are ready for an ambush. As much as Tsujinami would like to experience it, she tells the other that they will have to wait longer and drags him through a kiss so he can't follow her. She uses the Lost Matrix as a negotiation deal so Asuka can release her comrades. After they are released, Yuzavi wants to help her, and just then the chairman arrives, informing them about the ongoing war and giving them weapons so they can engage in combat. Takaru comes outside and Lapis heals him. She traces the location of Tsujinami and the other is curious whether she can fly. She might not be able to get there right away, but Lapis does have a gliding ability causing Takaru to shower heaps of praises on her, making her blush. After cladding himself with the witch hunter armor, Takaru unleashes his strength. His friends are glad that he's alive and well, and they begin their mission of rescuing Tsujinami. Atop the tower, Tsujinami reveals that she has been keeping the Lost Matrix within her body and has attained the magical capabilities of a dark elf. She demonstrates this by activating her nanomachines and turning them into one. Tsujinami threatens to destroy the whole facility with antimatter. 
The other is overcome with emotions and Sujinami nearly convinces her to join her, but haunted barges in and pierces her chest. Enraged, Sujinami uses the antimatter bomb to destroy the whole facility, but Haunted still gets away. Moreover, she uses nanomachines to heal her sister, but they are imperfect and she ultimately fails. Before Asuka passes away, she informs her sister that Canaria is still alive and Valhalla has her in their keep. Haunted reveals that he was just using Asuka to make dragoons and resurrect dark elves, but now that he has attained all the knowledge, he doesn't need her anymore. After Sujinami fires a bullet at him, he summons a mechanoid wyvern to unleash havoc. Sujinami is about to fall down when Takaru comes to her rescue and takes her away. Yuzagi shoots the wyvern, but it has no effect on the enemy, much to their shock. Takaru almost runs out of mana, but Mary helps him and they successfully take down the foe. Later, to comfort Sujinami, Takaru pats her head and assures her that he will help her in carrying the burden of her tears. Sujinami is back at the academy and she decides to take on a mission preventing a black market trade of magic artifacts. Alka tells her that she can accomplish it on her own, but she assures her that it is way out of her league and suggests that she shouldn't participate. Alka doesn't listen to her and is embarrassed that they have to entertain the guests at a club to get their hands on the dealer. Except for her, everyone knows their role in Takaru is even more impressive. After they point out the dealer, Appa sits near him to snatch the artifact away, but the other accidentally touches her, causing her to shoot at the artifact. They are all disappointed that she destroyed a gaming console and the actual dealer runs away. But they manage to accomplish the mission and collect the artifacts, they still lost some points. Sujinami reveals that the ring isn't exactly rare, and at most it can make people fall in love with the wearer. She wants either Mary or Yuzagi to try them, but it accidentally finds a way to attach itself to Takaru's finger, and all of the girls start flirting with him. Their next mission is to analyze the weather and discover why the summer has been extended. They all are unserious about the mission and just want to enjoy the beach, much to Aoka's dismay. After playing some games and eating together, Takaru suddenly rushes to the bathroom due to a stomachache, and Lapis demonstrates how they can catch the sea monster causing all this. She uses Yuzagi and Mary as bait and attaches them to a fishing rod. However, their plan fails and the sea monster starts harassing them with its tentacles. Takaru rushes off to their help, but the armor is too heavy, instantly sinking him. Lapis transforms his sword into a fishing rod, and with the assistance of Yuzagi and Mary, Kakaru throws the sea hare onto the beach, ultimately defeating it. Afterward, Alka buys them ice cream as a treat for defeating the monster without her. Takaru visits his sister, Kaisuke, who is imprisoned deep in the underground prison. After informing her about his life as a squad captain, she feels jealous of the girls on his team. His time is up, and he promises that he will do something for her. Later, the squad has a mission, and they successfully apprehend the criminals, which earns them a fair share of points. Takaru finds out that Kuria is still alive and now he works directly for the chairman. At the office, Alka spots Takaru's dark bags under his eyes and tells her that he can rely on her if he ever feels burdened. The chairman visits the prison to see the experiment being done on Kaisuke. Apparently, Kaisuke's zeman body grows out of control every once in a while, causing her to grow horns. To keep her away from destroying the world, they must kill and resurrect her routinely. Kiranage enters her cell to kill her once again while she calls out for her big brother. On another mission, they are tracking a wanted criminal, but are eventually discovered. As the wizard gets away, Takaru chases him but stumbles upon Kaisuke, who has murdered and absorbed the wizard. After the others arrive, Takaru immediately draws his sword to prevent them from touching her. The chairman instructs Kirigane to track her down. At their hideout, Takaru explains that Kaisuke can't control her powers and she often ends up hurting people. Sujinami explains that his sister is suffering from overflow syndrome where witches cannot control their mana. A glapier can't help her either as her magical energy is too much for her to control. The group wants Takaru to enjoy some time with his sister, and they dress up Kaisuke for a family date with her brother. Later, Kaisuke wants his favor and asks that he kill her, much to his astonishment. Kaisuke has noticed that her power grants her wishes now and feels that it is time her brother kills her as she wants to die at his hands. However, the other isn't planning on taking her life away until she has truly reached her limit. Valhalla members, Canaria and Orochi learn about Kaisuke's escape and plan to capture her. The Kusanani siblings are soon attacked by Kuya, who wants to get rid of Kaisuke. Takaru realizes that Yashimizu is actually a relic eater in human form, and they start fighting while transformed. Eventually, Kirigane arrives to stop them and take Kaisuke back to the prison. The chairman informs him that they are taking his sister to a secret facility where they will try to find a cure for her. He cannot reveal the location but assures Takaru that he is taking her away for their sake. Later, Canaria takes over the Anti-Magic Academy's plane but realizes that it is a decoy, and their target is on the truck. 
In a flashback, Takaru's father reveals that Kusanagi's daughters are always born demons. Usually, it would be killed immediately, but the curse had gotten so strong that Kaisuke was born immortal. After she kills their father, Takaru takes the sword but can't bring himself to kill her and decides to protect her. At the prison, after Alka assures him that she will always be there for him, Mabara rescues them, and they head off to prevent Valhalla from capturing his sister. While Kirigen confronts Orochi in a duel, Kuga heads off but decides to kill Kaisuke. His plan doesn't go well as Takaru arrives for his sister's help. After losing a duel to Takaru, Kuya escapes and Kaisuke's wish is revealed to be her death by her brother's hands. This makes her immortal against any other threat, and just then, Haunted stabs him, causing Kaisuke to go berserk. It is revealed that the entire situation was orchestrated by the alchemist chairwoman Suzuka Sujinami, a mother-like figure to Asuka and Sujinami. The two wager on whether Takaru will kill his sister. Alka is about to rescue Takaru when Haunted stops her, revealing that he intends to use his as bait to let Kaisuke unleash her true power. She forms a contract with her weapon and transforms to engage in combat against him. However, this is still too much for her and she takes Takaru away. In a dream, Takaru is confronted by Lapis, who asks him various questions and allows him to unleash his full power. After he wakes up, he transforms once again, powers up with new abilities, and heads off to be haunted and rescue his sister. Alka wants to stop him, but he absorbs her power and leaves her so others can take care of her. During their duel, Kaisuke's curse continues to blame him for Kaisuke's state while she wants him to kill her. After a much hard-fought battle, Takaru eventually manages to defeat Haunted and saves his sister. He cannot bring himself to kill his sister, and separates her from the curse, causing it to disappear. Meanwhile, Orochi Kusanani confronts the chairman, who is revealed to be igniting an ancient war using Takaru. Later, Takaru feels pessimistic that he only condemned his sister to suffer more, but his teammates assure him that they will always carry half his burden. What do you think is the chairman's true goal? Let us know in the comments. For now, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for more content.